Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello and welcome back to another mold reveal. It is number 84 and we pour this one up. I wanted to say thank you to all the people guessing in the shorts earlier this week. You guys are getting so good at guessing what is inside now. I opened this one up and it is missing clay. <laughs> Just kidding. So essentially what happens is sometimes I open it up and the clay is hanging on to the other side, but you could see what it was. It was this gorgeous little dainty milk jug. I actually love the shape of this, the spout and how that handle sits. It's really lovely. Very simple piece and very traditional and almost generic. So much so that the mold has no markings. It doesn't have a year or who made it. Uh, I, I guess because they're quite common. I don't know why there's no marking. Uh, maybe it came in as part of a collection and the main piece of the collection has the markings. But regardless, this is a gorgeous piece. So whoever made it, congrats. This is lovely. I can't wait to paint this one up. For this mold, I really had a few ideas. I would love to do my normal sort of floral style and cover this piece, but I really wanted to try my hand at Delft Pottery. There's been a few molds where I've sort of, I guess, paid a bit of a tribute to it and haven't fully gone into it. Now, I need to put a disclaimer in this that I haven't actually ever researched how to do Delft Pottery. I thought it would just look fabulous with some experimental materials I have here. But Del Delft style has this beautiful sense of symmetry, but also an organic style flow. It's curvy, but the shapes are distinctive. So I did this little sketch on my iPad and I printed it off. First, I tried out the different sizes to see which one would look best on the piece and also wouldn't be super impossible to find paint without losing the design and the brush strokes. I then used tracing paper to apply the design so we could try and get some sort of symmetry on each side of each different jug. So tracing these alone took me so long. I only showed you one, but I ended up tracing this 12 times. <laughs> It was so long on each jug, so I had to do the six jugs on both sides. Uh, and then I had to also go over and grey lead because you can see here that the tracing was super fine and I wanted to make sure I didn't lose any of those designs. The other part of this was it was so messy because I kept smudging the grey lead. Usually grey lead's fine because I paint straight on greenware, but I had this silly idea of this week to paint on bisque five pieces, which means it's a lot drier, which means the grey lead is kind of like permanent marker on sticky tape. You know how it kind of like doesn't stick, it just smudges everywhere. So it was so fiddly to paint without touching it. I started on the first piece and I was so sure of myself on this too that using this cobalt wash that I've used in previous videos as a fine liner rather than a wash would look so splendid and like look like that Delft blue pottery look but the cobalt kept settling in the liquid every single time I went to paint. So in between that time of painting, it would just settle and it would either be super lumpy or too watery when I did my brush back in and I'd had to mix it each time. And it was just so frustrating because I was trying to get these really satisfying smooth line works, but it just kept being clumpy or too watery and bleeding everywhere. And then I finished the first half and managed to smudge the other side everywhere. And wherever the blue goes, it will stay. Like it will show up later. The other thing with this cobalt stuff is that it actually flashes onto other pieces in the kiln. So you need to give it space between other pieces. So I really found that I had a lot of issues this week and I was so sure and I'm very sad that my initial idea didn't work out how I thought it would. I was going to do six of these beautiful blue pieces and it just didn't work. It just wasn't working. But instead of carding the one that smudged, I decided to fire it anyway to see how it looks and see whether I can learn something from it. And instead I did that one that you just saw with a blue underglaze instead to try and get the idea if the first one was a total fail. This is also a 
I told you so. You should have looked up how to do it. <laughs> but that's okay. Sometimes there's fun in the learning and the experimentation. So next time I will look up how to do it. So for the rest of the pieces, because I painstakingly spent so much time tracing this one design on all of them, intentionally trying to do that cobalt on all of it, I decided to do some random techniques featuring this design and we're just going to call it kind of like a let's compare the techniques with the same design and same piece so this design I well this technique I decided to do a sort of watercolor dab of underglaze in the sort of areas and then I went over the line work with the black underglaze this was just to sort of see how the black line work would pop against this soft pastel watercolor backdrop I also did the outline in a brown to see how the black outline would compare to a softer color as well as I guess like the contrast between a black and a brown how they make the piece feel different. There are two more techniques that I tried out, uh, one that I've done before, which is underglaze and then a glaze one, but I'll talk about those when we get to them. But I just wanted to note that I wasn't, I was planning to just let this be a very chill, not much talking, just enjoy some line work, painting video, but there's so much to talk about because so much kind of didn't work. I really had too much trust in the process this time. I kept going, trust the process, trust the process. But at every corner, the process was like, nah, it ain't it this week. <laughs> I thought, I just thought it was going to work. But I then remind myself that everyone else doesn't know what I can see in my head and what I was visualizing for this piece. And I'm always saying this to my eyes friends. So I'm going to say it to you that just because it doesn't, doesn't look the way you imagined it doesn't mean it's not worthy of space and time no one else can see what you imagined and for all they know it is exactly how you had planned it and it is exactly the intention you had for the piece so I say to always show these works regardless because you never know who might fall in love so I'm taking my own advice and although I'm pretty sad that the full vision is not coming to life this week how I intended it you guys have no idea what I actually intended so I'm going to share these anyway and hopefully it reaches someone who does adore these techniques or part of this video in some capacity. So here we have some samples of some Chrysanthos new pastel glaze range. So glazes are different to the pastels I just used as these ones turn into the glass like surface and they don't need other coats to make them shine. They are also not ideal for doing details like this like what underglaze what I use underglaze for is that they kind of can bleed um, they can run into each other they're more for sort of covering things um, completely so I thought I might as well try it with an illustrative style some people do use it as an illustrative medium but I thought I might as well try it just to see how the colors sort of pop and how they move because I actually have another mystery mold coming up in a couple of weeks I'm waiting for it to dry properly that I would love to use these and I think they're going to be so perfect so you'll just have to hang out for that but this is a little taste of what they're going to look like. So I only did about a coat to two coats in some areas on this. Um, yeah, it, they, they should have a few more coats. So they're going to be a bit sort of washy and not as vibrant as they should be. But I just wanted to give it a go. So don't judge this glaze by how I've used it because it's not right. I then also added a glaze around the outside of the design because I didn't want to leave it raw. It just makes my skin crawl like nails on a chalkboard, you know? The last one I did was just an underglaze and I just tried some colors that I haven't usually used together in a big design. So that's that one. We use a lot of underglaze, so you're used to that, okay? I don't have to explain that much more. I re fired these and already I can see the cobalt wash has smudged so much. It's everywhere. I was just feeling really uh but I also noticed that it was sort of bleeding around the outsides of the line work so maybe it might have this really cool sort of splodgy effect I did end up sanding off some of the splodges with a mask on outside just to try and get rid of a few of those unintentional splodges but yeah I'm not feeling hopeful for the results of that one but we will see. This is not a very upbeat video. Well, it is an upbeat video, but it's just like, oh, we had a lot of problems when we should have just done some fun florals. Here is the unpacking of the kiln and you can sort of see a sneak peek of some of the pieces, but we'll have a look at each one. I am wrapped with this mold. I'm just not wrapped with my design this week and just hitting a few roadblocks along the way. 
So here is the cobalt. Let me say the color is spot on. I think it was just applied too thick. It was just so hard to make it like an ink consistency. In some areas where it's light on, you can see that sort of delft, really lovely pottery look, but where it's thick, it is really thick and it has bled into everything. It's a, it's a bit of a shame because I can see the intention behind it, but from far away, it looks like this really gorgeous sort of scriptural abstract work. I guess here is what I really wanted it to sort of look like but in that deep rich blue color uh, with more variation in the color itself the underglaze is sort of a bit one tone but I think this is still gorgeous this one surprised me I love this I didn't expect to love a mainly black design I cannot believe it I don't like to use much black other than for like eyes and like line work or mouths and things like that but not a full line work piece I really love it I think it's such a contrast and so fun and it's just striking the brown not so much but it still has this really lovely softness it's a little bit washy here they are next to each other you can see how much a difference that black is just such a pop of color and contrast to the back washy design here are the pastel glazes i love these colors and it's got this beautiful softness to it i'm actually so excited to use these on the next piece that i've got planned the one thing i noticed was my cobalt flashed onto this one this was the only one i didn't want it to flash on and of course it flashed on this one but you can get an idea of how gorgeous these are going to look on the future mystery mold you're just gonna have to see it and wait this is the underglaze one i think it's great it didn't wow me i tried some colors i wouldn't usually try in that sort of order i think it looks lovely still but again the black line work is my standout i think it just really pops and it's very clear the design is such a statement whereas the other ones sort of feel a bit muddy the pastel glazes look cool as well it's got its own kind of aesthetic as for the jug shape i love these and i have definitely planned a redemption video on these ones because i want to do some nice little florals all over them not a delf style just like my normal style anyway let me know what you think of the mold itself in the comments and here is your sneak peek for next week don't forget to like and subscribe